from St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. Plan now to join us for our Holy Week celebration, March 29th through April 2nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. nightly, as we commemorate the final week of the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Share in the music ministry and inspirational preaching of our life stage pastors, Lance Watson Jr., Michelle Townsend, Jamie Duncan, and Curtis Ballard Jr. On Good Friday, our fine arts ministry invites you to a special dance presentation of the seven last words. Spread the word, don't miss it. Post your picture in our 2021 Easter photo album. Here's how. Number one, take a picture using the camera on your smartphone. Number two, Turn your phone sideways or landscape mode. Number three, be as relaxed or formal as you like. Number four, make sure your background is free from any confidential information. Number five, make sure the lighting is bright. Outdoor daytime photos are always a winner. Number six, look directly at the camera on your smartphone rather than looking directly at the screen. And number seven, finally email your photo to deco at myspbc.org or upload to myspbc.info slash deco. Make sure and send no later than March 26th. Easter extravaganza bagged up will take place on Saturday, April 3rd from 12 to 2 p.m. on all of our campuses. Drive up to our North Campus, our South Campus, or the Petersburg Dream Center to pick up an Easter bag for your child or children. Be sure that they log into Kids Worship on Easter Sunday, April 4th at 2 p.m. with their Easter bag for our virtual Easter extravaganza. No registration is required and this event is free, but we encourage you to help in our outreach efforts to support Caritas by bringing a donated item in the form of peanut butter, cereal, hot or cold, pasta, spaghetti or elbow, spaghetti sauce, brown rice, fruit cups, and dry beans. Family Paint Night will take place Saturday, April 3rd from 4 to 5 p.m. on Microsoft Teams. David Marion of Liberated Flow will lead children, students, and their families in an Easter-themed paint-by-number exercise on pre-sketched canvases. See our website for registration details. Ready to celebrate Easter 2021? Join us live online at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. at myspbc.tv, our mobile app, Facebook, and YouTube Live at MySPBC to celebrate Easter this year. Share in this time of engaging worship with our special guest, Kurt Carr. Experience the Easter story and celebrate the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Use the Easter Facebook event to invite your friends and family. Students, don't miss our SMB Student Worship at 12 p.m., followed by our Imagination Kids Worship Easter Extravaganza Celebration at 2 p.m. Then attend our Front Row Concert Series at 7 p.m. at myspbc.tv, our mobile app, Facebook, and YouTube Live at myspbc, featuring Jonathan McReynolds. Use the Front Row Concert Facebook event to invite your friends and family. Join us for the Bridge Bible Study every Thursday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's streamed across all of our platforms. Starting April 8th, we're beginning a new teaching series entitled Hurt But Not Hindered, How to Move Forward. You don't want to miss it. Invite your friends and family. Download the student outline from our website at myspbc.org or text the word INSIDER to 804-643-4769 to receive it automatically each week. Invite someone to watch with you. You may not realize it, but the health of your soul is affected by what you experience in life, the ups and downs, challenges, and stress. Caring for your soul goes a long way in keeping you steady, filled with peace, and growing in wisdom. After a year in pandemic, we are all in need of repair. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, beginning April 11th for this insightful new series as he leads us on a journey of soul repair. Invite somebody to share it with you. We're continuing our efforts to tell the church's history through stained glass panels for the chapel at St. Paul's North. 
we are looking specifically for photos of the following persons. Reverend Timothy Pickney, Margie Bowling, Massey Crawford, John Crawley, Josie Crawley, Daisy Graham, Francis Harris, Hattie Moore, William Moore, Mary Neal, Reverend Isaac Purley, Martha Purley, Evelyn Scott, and Reverend John Scott. If you have any, please call Mrs. Francis Buster at 804-463-2421. We'll be accepting pictures until April 9th. Reboot your finances this post-pandemic season with our virtual Basic Money. This workshop features four one-hour sessions that begin Saturday, April 10th from 10 to 11 a.m. The sessions are designed to help you make smart money choices, gain insight about wise investments, and make the best plan for your stimulus check. Space is limited, so register now at www.myspbc.info slash basic money 2021. Registration is required and closes on April 8th. For questions or additional information, please call the care team at 804-463-2401. We are St. Paul's everywhere. Every week, we quadruple stream our worship celebrations and the Bible studies on our mobile app at myspbc.tv, Facebook, and YouTube at myspbc. If you have trouble with one stream, just stream hop over to another platform. You're never disconnected. Together, we are communicating the positive power of Jesus Christ to our generation. Spread the word. Take St. Paul's everywhere by downloading our free app from your app store or just text my SBBC app to 77977 and follow the prompts to gain access to information and resources that will help you to cultivate your faith and deepen your connection with our church family. Take St. Paul's everywhere. Everybody is in a stage of life. We'd like you to use your life stage color when you comment and post online. The circles are in your emojis. Here are the colors. Imagination, yellow. SMB, purple. Dream Chasers, orange. Aspire, red. Fusion, blue. Encore, green. Primetime, gold. And Refiners, white. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us and we are his. We are God's people and sheep in his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks unto God. Bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to every generation. Let us pray. Precious and eternal God, author and finisher of our faith, thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. Lord, we welcome you among us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have sustained in each of us. As you have opened the door to salvation, we ask that you will continue in your great works. Open the ears that they may hear your voice. Open minds that they may receive your wisdom. Open spirits that they may know your guidance. And open hearts that they may receive your wonderful love. We ask all this in the name that's held in veneration and honor above all names. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Welcome, in grace and in peace, I welcome you, St. Paul's Baptist Church family, visitors, and friends. My name is Minister Lance Watson, Jr. I am honored to serve as the Aspire Life Stage Pastor at, here at St. Paul's Baptist Church over the 30-year-olds. On behalf of our Chief Dreamer, Dr. Lance Watson and First Lady Rose Watson, we are so excited that you've decided to join us today on St. Paul's Everywhere. We are a church for people on the grow. 
touching the world with love and communicating the positive power of Jesus Christ to every generation. And out of all the places, out of all the pages, out of all the platforms that you could have attended this morning, we are so excited that you've decided to join us today. Listen, we want to get connected and we want to stay connected to you. There are a number of ways that you can engage us. For the new per person, the brand new person, you can text the word NEW, N-E-W, to 804-643-4769. If you're more tech savvy and you like to connect to us in a different way, we have a brand new and powerful church app. You can simply download this by texting the word my SPBC APP. That's my SPBC app to 77977 and download it today. I love it and I'm sure that you'll love it too. One last thing, our fellowship is not a passive watching. We can save that for when the movie theaters open back up. We encourage you to comment, to share, to like, to call your friends and your family and invite them to worship today. Don't just stand by and watch. Say good morning to someone in the chat. Post your life state color emoji and I'd be happy to acknowledge all the wonderful red hearts for Aspire in the chat. Amen. But let us know that you're in the virtual space with us today in worship. We, wor we want to worship with you and not for you. So get involved and get ready. Let's go to church.
As dawn broke, he arose. Jesus was coming for his kingdom. Coming to save man from sin. Coming to crush the hold of death from within. Coming so man could live with him forever. But man's heart did not desire his saving grace. He came humbly on the unbroken foal of a donkey. As he entered the city, the people rejoiced, but Jesus wept. You see, the crowds didn't want forgiveness and mercy. They desired an earthly victory. They followed Jesus for misguided reasons. They followed his works, but denied the freedom in his words. He came for a spiritual kingdom, not of earth, but the kingdom of heaven. And though legions of angels knelt before him, he did not come to wage war on the Romans, but to wage war on religion. That cancerous hypocrisy driven by pride, which concluded that the sinner should be shamed and excluded. But these very sinners were the purpose of his crucifixion. Make no mistake, Jesus did not die a victim. He was instead the willing sacrifice for our sin. We worship Jesus today, not because of what he may do for us, but because of who he is to us, our King, our Messiah, and our God, who brought his kingdom through a cross, the heavy cross that pointed to a promise, a revelation, that one day will stand with every nation, tribe, and language. Palm branches lifted high, one voice united in a deafening cry. Salvation belongs to our God. Jesus is here. His kingdom is here.
my brothers and sisters, what a tremendous joy it is to share with you on this Palm Sunday, where collectively, from our hearts, we cry, Hosanna, blessed is he, the Lord Jesus, who comes in the name of the Lord. Even in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of crisis around the world, and perhaps even in our lives, we still want to proclaim today that he is Lord. There is a word from the Lord for you and for me. So travel with me now to the gospel according to Luke chapter 19. I'd like to read in your hearing verses 37 through 40. And I'm going to read out of the New International Version of the Bible, which may read a little bit differently than yours. But at the end of the day, the truth is just the truth. Listen now for a word from God. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And from that text, my brothers and sisters, I'd like to talk to you with the aid and anointing and assistance of the Holy Spirit from the subject, unmute yourself. Go ahead and type it in the comments, 521 of you early, just to encourage your neighbors. Would you type those two words, unmute yourself? During this last year, we have all been immersed in a lot of terms that were not previously a part of our vocabulary. From antibodies to herd immunity, from remote working to distance learning, from social distancing to quarantining, from PPE to vaccine efficacy, from immunocompromise to intubation, from comorbidities to community spread, over this last year, all of us have been immersed in a lot of terms that were not previously a part of our vocabulary. And one of the more common phrases we have learned to use is this one, unmute yourself. In the midst of our Zoom meetings, Google meetups and hangouts, GoToMeeting and Microsoft Teams, many of us have said to others or have had others to say to us, unmute yourself. It's what people say to you when you're video conferencing and your mouth is moving, but your words cannot be heard. It's how you concrete, uh, concretely connect and engage fully in the conversation before you. Unmute yourself. You know, as I contemplated our new reality, it occurred to me that there is perhaps a greater challenge and responsibility upon us because as people of faith and conscience, we each need to consciously make the decision that we will no longer live our lives on mute. Indeed, there is a cruel and crushing conspiracy between terrible, avoidable, and unnecessary suffering and incredible, indifferent, disconnected, and dispassionate silence. Too many people are muted about too many things. Unmute yourself and talk about the ongoing interference of Russia and Iran in our national politics, about the undeclared war taking place in cyberspace with digital weapons and virtual warriors, about the suppression of freedom in Hong Kong, the undermining of independence in Myanmar, about the economic woes of Haiti, about vulnerable children separated from their families at our southern border, about rising domestic violence around the globe. Unmute yourself and talk about the rise of extremist groups and their antagonism towards minorities, about the suffering masses in El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, about impoverished ghettos scattered across the world without adequate housing, water, food, medicine, or clothing that become recruitment stations for terrorism and anarchy. Unmute yourself 
and speak out loud about the abiding unrest in Israel, the continuing tensions in Palestine and on the West Bank about the devastation of human life in Pakistan, the dissension in the Philippines and the escalating poverty in Yemen about human trafficking and the children trapped in its web of slavery, about the climate crisis and the ticking time bomb of carbon emissions. Unmute yourself and address the inequities in access to health care and treatment during a global pandemic where the hospitalization and mortality of black and brown people is double that of our white counterparts. Unmute yourself and converse about the immoral devaluation of black lives and how it's ingrained in our political and social economy about the unprecedented pace of mass incarceration fueled by private prisons that need profits. Unmute yourself and speak to the widening wealth gap that was and is funded by government policy and literal giveaways of finance, education, land, and infrastructure that provide intergenerational wealth for the privileged and transgenerational poverty for the oppressed. Unmute yourself and talk about the absence of a livable minimum wage and the need for bank lending and finance reform that allows African Americans to comprise 13% of the population but only receive 3% of the loans and credit lines extended. Unmute yourself and raise your voice today against redlining the unscrupulous banking practice that earmarks minority neighborhoods as hazardous and facilitates the denial of insurance and thereby the depression of property values and the denial of home equity. Unmute yourself and address the need for the Federal Reserve to adopt a modern monetary theory with the goal of maximizing employment, housing, education, and infrastructure opportunities instead of just the bottom line of big shot Wall Street ballers. Unmute yourself and let's discuss judicial and public policy reform, the need to recognize racism as a public health crisis that mandates a federal response and about prison labor supported by public dollars for private purposes, about voting rights being automatically restored in every state once a person has completed their sentence, about the need to inspect water supplies in all all communities for lead and other forms of contaminants and making delivering clean water a priority in any future infrastructure plan about ending qualified immunity and permitting everybody, uniformed or not, to be treated equally under the law, about eliminating no-knock warrants and chokeholds and normalizing the treatment of mental illness, about the aching need to address our collective approach to our Confederate past. Unmute yourself and talk out loud to the 40 states who even now have rolled back the Jim Crow clock and put forth more than 200 bills designed to restrict the right to vote and access to the ballot box. About millions of people incarcerated for nonviolent marijuana offenses languishing in prison while others are now making millions upon millions doing legally what they did previously. Unmute yourself and let's talk about food insecurity and the cold callous grip of poverty right here in our country about infants who suffer from malnutrition, low birth rate babies whose parents neglected or could not afford adequate prenatal care, about the epidemic of teenage suicides, about our neglected and woeful children, children you can't hurt because they've never been hugged, children you can't punish because they've never been praised, children you can't develop because they've never been disciplined, children you can't kill because they've never really lived. The ozone layer is being ripped and torn and we are mute. 
the environment is being destroyed and dismantled and we are mute. White supremacy and domestic terrorists parade boldly in our streets and even storm the nation's capital and we are mute. We are exposed to nuclear contamination and toxic waste and we are mute. Pandemics pervade our communities and we are mute. People are starving, homeless, hungry, helpless, and we are on mute. Our schools are on the skids, and we're on mute. Seniors are being neglected, forgotten, and deserted, and we're on mute. People are afraid of dictators, derelicts, addicts, and despots, afraid sometimes even of their own children, afraid of those who don't care what they have to do to get the things they believe they cannot live without. Today Today is a good day to unmute yourself. Could I get 489 of you? I'll make 490 to encourage somebody in the chat space and type in all caps with an exclamation mark, unmute yourself. Go ahead and do it if you will. Unmute yourself. For it was the revered Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. who once declared that the world is being destroyed not so much by the vitriolic words of bad people as it is by the appalling silence of good people. Edmund Burke once wrote, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph in the earth is for good people to say nothing and do nothing. You don't have to sell dope or sniff coke. You don't have to rob anybody, exploit anybody, undercut anybody, steal from anybody, or embezzle anything. Just sit on your hands. Hold your peace. Join the conspiracy of silence and wickedness will win. Evil will triumph. People will be destroyed and the devil will get the victory. Today is the day for you to unmute yourself. Oh, that today we would internalize James 1.22 in our hearts. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. I wish that every woman on this stream would take seriously our collective responsibility to reach and teach our girls, to educate them about their heritage and their hope, their promise and their possibility, to provide for them places and spaces where they can investigate and we can educate, recreate, and motivate them towards the destiny for which they have been created. I wish that every man would rise up and act on our collective responsibility to provide positive role models, father figures, and masculine images for our growing boys to touch their lives with love, their hearts with hope, and their minds with enlightenment, empowerment, and understanding. I wish that every church everywhere would maintain the tenacity and veracity that we have tapped during this pandemic to address the issues of hunger and human suffering in our communities, that every member of every church, mosque, and temple everywhere would give of their money and minutes to help the least, the lost, the last, the looked over, and the left behind who are among us, that every person of faith would match their talk with their walk, their words with their works, their excitement with their effort, and their praises with their pro productivity, that everyone who calls on the name of God everywhere would pledge themselves to leave this world a better place than they found it. Today is a good day to unmute yourself. However, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, ours is not merely a negative campaign to defeat evil, but a positive program to promote good, advance justice, and glorify God. Our purpose is not merely to tear down Satan's stronghold, but to build up God's kingdom. And therefore, we must declare the goodness of God, the hope that is present in Jesus Christ, the power available through the Holy Spirit to be witnesses in this world, not only against sin in the world, but for the Savior of the world. And the time to unmute yourself 
is right now. Go on and type it in the chat space. Right now, Joseph of Arimathea took the dead body of Jesus down from the cross, wrapped it in a linen shroud, put spices in the folds of the shroud, and laid the inanimate corpse of Christ in a brand new rock hewn tomb in his garden. Jesus was treated much better in death than he had ever been treated in life. While he lived, he had nowhere to lay his head. But when he died, he got an aristocrat's tomb. Though Joseph was a member of the high court that condemned Jesus, there is no clue, hint, or insinuation that he ever lifted one bony finger or spoke one supportive word in Jesus' behalf that might have prevented him being crucified. Joseph is the late benefactor who gave Jesus a tomb after he died, but remained voiceless and mute while Jesus was still alive. See, too often we wait too late to pay our tribute, to bring our flowers, light our candles, lay our teddy bears at the place of violence and express our gratitude. You know and I know that we'll fly all the way across the country to attend somebody's funeral and yet we will not send them a text, email, or direct message of encouragement or support while they are alive. We will stretch people out in expensive caskets, intern them in lavish graves, make of their names a national hashtag and post it everywhere after they die but won't offer them a cup of cold water while they are yet alive. We will cry copious tears and make long orations at the funeral but cannot find it in our hearts to say I love you, I believe in you, I thank you while they live. Whenever anybody dies, everybody wants to get on the program and extend the service three and a half hours while they talk about how much they respected and honored and revered and loved the dead, but they didn't tell them anything positive, constructive, or supportive while they were yet alive. Nobody wants to go to the bedside and keep company with the departing while they are alive, but we'll make long resolutions over the dead while neglecting to say I love you to the living. Preach Lance Watson, I'm already doing that. Because in everybody's life, there's somebody who's been a friend to you, somebody dared to love you, somebody believed in you when you couldn't believe in yourself, somebody helped you onward, upward, and forward. I like to call that person your cookie person. Lean in right here and let me tell you why. Because with reference to my childhood experience of being justly whipped by my mother for some mischief I had done and sent to bed early without my dinner, I was crying in the bed, but way over in the middle of the night, I could hear the soft genteel approaching footsteps of my saintly grandmother, Sarah Whitley, who risked my mother's anger to bring me a glass of warm milk and a cookie to let me know that even though I was wrong and I deserved the discipline that I received, that she still loved me and after the crying was over, joy would come in the morning and everything would be all right. In everybody's life, there's a cookie person. Somebody brought you a cookie of kindness that you didn't deserve. Somebody gave you a sense of confidence, value, self-worth, and self-esteem. Somebody touched you with love and tenderness and compassion. Don't just thank God for his blessings, but go to that person and say, I thank you, I love you, and I appreciate you. Send them a card, drop them a line, write them an email, post something on their page, let them know while they live. I have not forgotten how you stood by me when I needed somebody. You were there for me, and I am grateful. One of my favorite stories, and I've told it several times, is of a woman who visited 
a crowded funeral parlor jammed in every corner with mourners. Every corner was filled with flowers and in walked this woman holding in her arms a huge pot of steaming chicken noodle soup. She walked straight down the main aisle past the family dressed in black and sat that soup at the head of the casket while copiously crying out, poor Sam, I brought him his favorite soup and he can't even eat it. The family became incredulously indignant. They stopped crying and became extremely upset and angry and finally one stood up and said to this sister, how dare you desecrate the solemnity of this occasion? How dare you break up the dignity of death. How dare you come strolling up in this funeral home with that soup? You know Sam is dead. You know Sam can't eat that soup. And that sister whirled around and said, if Sam can smell your flowers, then Sam can eat my soup. You got to get that because here's the point, my friends. We should give people their soup, their flowers, and their praises while they live. And let me push it before I take it back. Because if you treat people right while they're alive, you won't have to put on a floor show after they die. Joseph waited too late. He was muted too long. Unmute yourself and tell the oppressed that this is our father's world and he will make it right. Tell the victims of injustice everywhere that the prophet Amos has already declared that justice will one day roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Tell the hurting, hopeless, homeless victims of war across the globe, just hold on. Hope is on the way. Peace will one day prevail. People will one day they beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and study war no more. Tell those who desire deliverance that if the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Unmute yourself and tell the sick among us that he was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was put upon him so that with his stripes you can be healed. Tell those who are caught up in self and stuck in their own self-importance that God's will will be done. God's kingdom will come. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Unmute yourself. Say to those who walk in despair and sit in darkness that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. The wicked must cease from troubling and the weary will be at rest. Unmute yourself. Not everybody, but somebody ought to unmute yourself because not everybody can be a witness. Not everybody can talk about God's goodness. Not not everybody has surrendered to the power and love and grace of Jesus Christ. Some folk can't talk because they ain't got nothing to talk about. Some people don't know God. Some people have never felt God's power. Some people have never thought about God's goodness. Some people have never been infilled and indwelt and running over with the Holy Spirit. And therefore, they must stay muted. They have to hold their peace because they ain't got nothing to say. They ain't seen nothing. They ain't heard nothing. They ain't felt nothing. They ain't been through nothing. They ain't got nothing. Everybody cannot speak authoritatively on every subject. Everybody cannot speak with convincing credibility about the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ, the fellowship and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Everybody can't talk about God's amazing grace. Everybody can't sing amazing grace because they don't know whether or not they've been saved or converted or born again. They don't know deep in their hearts that their sins have already been forgiven and that Jesus Christ through his cross has reconciled them to God. Everybody can't say amen because that's an affirmative witness, a corroborating testimony, a supportive confirmation. Amen. 
is a Hebrew word that means so let it be. And like I say, so it is. Amen. I know it's true. Amen. God is dependable. Amen. His word is reliable. Amen. His truth is unstoppable. Amen. His love is undeniable. His kingdom is invincible. Amen. So let it be. And it is so. Everybody can't say amen. Everybody can't shout Hosanna because that's an Aramaic word that means save Lord now we beseech thee and if you're looking for the stimulus to save you you can't say Hosanna if you're dependent on the government to make things right you can't say Hosanna if you're looking for goods to guide your pleasure to promote you or money to satisfy you you can't shout Hosanna everybody can't shout hallelujah because that word means highest praise to God and if you're wrapped up in yourself you can't shout hallelujah if you're a prisoner of your own ego you can't shout hallelujah if you can't break through your own sense of culture and tradition you can't shout hallelujah there are pockets of silence in every church. There are people who say nothing because they know nothing. But the pockets of silence shouldn't take up the whole fellowship. There ought to be more to a suit than just a pocket. Unmute yourself and say it out loud. It's been more than a year, my friends, but I like what Pastor Mike McClure Jr. said. He said, I'm in a pandemic, but I've decided to make it a plandemic. That's good right there. I've decided to make it a Plandemic. Pastor Mike said, I'm planning my future. I'm planning my path. I'm planning my breakthrough. I'm planning my deliverance. I'm planning my overflow. I'm planning my victory. I tithe because it's part of the plan. I serve because it's part of the plan. I forgive because it's part of the plan. I sacrifice because it's part of the plan. I pray because it's part of the plan. And I praise because it's part of the plan. Psalm 107 verse 2 says let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed you can't stay on mute. Silent affirmation is not acceptable. Voiceless verification is not an option. Unmute yourself and talk out loud. Come here real quick because one of the things I've missed this past year with the pandemic was the opportunity to talk trash with my guys about their football teams. The pandemic shut that down, but during previous seasons, Every time we got together on Sunday, we talk all kinds of trash about who was going to win, how much better one team was over the other. And it happened every single week because if you're a fan, watch this, whether your team is winning or not, you talk some trash. I ought to have 820 witnesses on this stream. Let me push you today. Let me give you a nudge. If you're a fan of God, if you're a friend of God, isn't it about time for you to do some trash talking about God when you consider all that God has done for you, all that God has brought you through, all that God has delivered you from and kept you in? Isn't it time for you to talk a little trash about God? Unmute yourself and talk about his goodness, talk about his mercy, talk about his faithfulness, talk about his grace. Unmute yourself and say out loud, he keeps doing great things for me. Tell somebody, every time I turn around, he's making a way. Tell somebody, he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. Tell somebody, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I'd be unmute yourself that's my point because it was a wonderful day when Jesus and his crew of disciples came streaming down the green slopes of the Mount of Olives going home to Jerusalem and went stepping through the valley of 
Jehoshaphat crossed over the brook Kedron and went swinging through the golden gates of the holy city. The authority of his presence was so commanding. The things that he did were so electrifying. Blind eyes were able to see lame legs surge with vitality and strength. And those confined to pallets of affliction were able to stand up and shout out loud. Parents brought their children for him to bless them. Relatives brought their loved ones, a veritable caravan of the needy to be touched and healed. Depressed spirits were lifted and made whole. Hopeless hearts dared to hope again. I tell you, it was a wonderful Palm Sunday as they marched into the city and somebody recognizing the power present in that moment said in the crowd, we should not be mute on a day like this with a savior like our savior. We should not be silent. We ought to unmute ourselves. The woman with the issue of blood said, let me talk. I found more healing in the hem of his garment than in all the pharmacies and clinics in town. The woman whose dead son Jesus had raised unmuted herself and said, he broke up my boy's funeral. And now I know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. The woman whom Jesus transformed at Jacob's well unmuted herself and said, I met the master one day and he told me all about myself and now I can tell the world that I have found a savior and he's sweet I know. Blind Bartimaeus unmuted himself and said, I heard Jesus' voice one day as I sat by the gate of Jericho and I threw my cane away. I threw my cloak away. I sold my CNI dog and now I've got a testimony. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost but now I'm found. I was blind but now I see. But the Bible says some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said, Master rebuke your disciples. Tell them to go on mute. Tell them to be silent. Who were these Pharisees? They were not strangers, enemies, or outsiders, but they were members of the multitude. They were right there in the crowd. Can I stick a pin right there? Because some of the greatest enemies of the church are already in the church. It's not the folk on the outside, but it's the hypocrites on the inside that keep the church as weak and confused as it sometimes appears. Because it's going to shock you, but everybody doesn't attend church to praise God. Everybody doesn't attend church to lift up the name of Jesus. Everybody doesn't show up to advance the kingdom of God. Some people come to be quiet. And others come to keep you quiet, to push your mute button to cool your ardor, to put your fire out. And they look at you funny when you say amen. The Pharisees te said, tell them to go on mute. This is a dignified place. This is a sophisticated gathering. We are educated people. We are yuppies and buppies. The upwardly middle class members of the black bourgeoisie. Tell them to put it on mute. Don't sing so loud. Tell the preacher, don't talk so loud. Tell the deacons to sit dignified and quiet. But Jesus said, hallelujah, if these hold their peace, if the keyboards aren't clicking, if their hands are not waving behind the computer or in front of the television set, if their tears are not flowing, if their hands are not clapping, if their feet are not padding, if their mouths are not speaking, the rocks and stones will immediately cry out. There will be a witness in this place. There will be a testimony on this day. There will be joy in the fellowship because it's impossible to stop true believers from praising God. It's impossible to silence one who has been truly born again. It's impossible to stop somebody whom God has blessed from saying thank you Lord because 
because they're not shouting because the choir sang good. They're not shouting because Watson is preaching right. But they're shouting because God has blessed them. God has lifted them. God has made a way for them. You can't stay on mute when God moves in, when God touches you, when God delivers you, when God lays his hands on you, you unmute yourself. Yes, you do, because praises of God are inevitable. When heaven moves, earth must respond. When God speaks, prophets must prophesy. When God talks, preachers must preach. When God speaks, saints have to testify. Jesus said, don't criticize these folk because something has happened. They can't help it. They've got something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. They've got something that's too hot to hold, too good not to be true. Something has happened. The kingdom is here. God is in our midst. The Holy Ghost is present. Barriers are broken. Goodness is flowing like a river. Justice is streaming down. Salvation is a reality. A new day has come. Valleys are being lifted. Mountains are being moved. Prayers have been answered. Doors have been opened. Ways have been made. Death has been postponed. Vaccines have been distributed. Burdens have been moved. Tears have been wiped. Problems have been solved. Something has happened. Don't you know that if you hold your peace, the rocks will cry out. The trees will talk. The rivers will ring. The heavens will shout glory. Unmute yourself. Don't let a rock talk for you when you can talk for yourself. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly king should speak his praise abroad. If you got a story, tell it. If you got a keyboard, type on it. If you got a trumpet, blow it. If you got a song, sing it. If you got an emoji, post it. If you got a hope, declare it. If you got a fire, let it burn. If you got a light, let it shine. Unmute yourself. I don't know how you feel about it, but I will be heard long as I live. Everywhere I go, everyone I see, I'm unmuted. He healed me. I'm unmuted. He saved me. I'm unmuted. He blessed me. I'm unmuted. He delivered me. I'm unmuted. He brought me over, brought me out, brought me through. I'm unmuted. He made a way when my back was against the wall. He made a way when it looked as if it was over. He made a way and I'm standing here. I'm preaching here. I'm shouting here just because he made a way. I'm unmuted. What about you? What about you? Unmute yourself and tell God, thank you. I'm unmuted for good. And I want to invite you today to find your voice. Unmute yourself and declare your faith in Jesus Christ. He is Lord. He is the Savior of the world. And He will save you right where you are if you trust Him. Today is your day, my friend. Right now is your time. You don't need anything else to happen. While the blood is still running warm in your veins, this is the moment for you to respond. 
whether you're in Atlanta or Afghanistan, California or Carolinas, this is your day to respond. Wherever you are in the world, we will find a way to minister to you because I'd love to be your pastor. And St. Paul's everywhere would love to be your church. If you're ready to make that decision, and I hope that you are, text the word JOIN to 77977 or visit our Zoom room reception. The information is on the screen right now. Give God a chance to go to work in your life. Do it right now. Has God been good to anybody on this stream? I can testify I am completely unmuted. God has been good to me. I raise that question and I provide that answer because that is the only attitude and spirit in which we can properly give from week to week in light of God's goodness to us. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I wanna encourage you now to prepare to worship God through the giving of your tithe and your offering. Let me thank you, St. Paul's, everywhere for your amazing generosity, even in this time. You are a miracle, and this pastor loves you from the bottom of his heart. All of the ways to give are posted on the lower third of our screen. You can give digitally, online, or simply write a check and drop it in the mail. We are grateful for your generous support, and we encourage you today to give your best. Remember this promise out of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Paul reminds us that whoever sows sparingly, meaning just a little, will reap sparingly just a little, but whoever sows generously a lot will also reap generously a lot. He says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. Not reluctantly, not under compulsion, not trying to impress anybody, not because somebody is forcing you to do it or manipulating you to do it, but you should give as you have decided in your heart. Here's why. God loves a cheerful giver. And here's the promise in verse 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That is God's promise. So as we gather our digital devices and our checkbooks to prepare to worship God through our giving, let us pray. Generous God, thank you that all things were created through you and for you. You are before all things and in you all things exist. Your word guides us to bring our tithes and our offerings into your storehouse and that you will respond by opening the windows, indeed the floodgates of heaven and sending down blessing upon blessing. Accept the gifts that we place humbly before you now. And may your peace and prosperity reign in our lives. May your love surround us. May your spirit empower us. May your joy uphold us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, we pray and we thank you. And everybody who agreed with that prayer said, I agree. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us give unto the Lord. Sing this thing. Every praise. 
is to our God. Every word of worship. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Come on, sing hallelujah with us. To our God. blessed by this worship celebration we certainly hope that you were take a moment before you log off to share with us a couple of comments and please be generous and share this stream with somebody else it is so easy all you have to do is click on the share arrow on your media player or copy the link and send it to the people in your network I also want to encourage you to download our GPS guide, our message application guide that's pinned in the comments so you can talk about this message with your family and your friends. It's been amazing to worship with you on this Palm Sunday. So would you receive our benediction together with me? It's on the screen. Will you say it with me as we prepare to go? I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone, never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently, live genuinely, and unmute yourself. God bless you real good. 
From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. Plan now to join us for our Holy Week celebration, March 29th through April 2nd, 2021 at 7 p.m. nightly, as we commemorate the final week of the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Share in the music ministry and inspirational preaching of our life stage pastors, Lance Watson Jr., Michelle Townsend, Jamie Duncan, and Curtis Ballard Jr. On Good Friday, our fine arts ministry invites you to a special dance presentation of the seven last words. Spread the word, don't miss it. Post your picture in our 2021 Easter photo album. Here's how. Number one, take a picture using the camera on your smartphone. Number two, turn your phone sideways or landscape mode. Number three, be as relaxed or formal as you like. Number four, make sure your background is free from any confidential information. Number five, make sure the lighting is bright. Outdoor daytime photos are always a winner. Number six, look directly at the camera on your smartphone rather than looking directly at the screen. And number seven, finally, email your photo to deco at myspbc.org or upload to myspbc.info slash deco. Make sure and send no later than March 26th. Easter Extravaganza Bagged Up will take place on Saturday, April 3rd from 12 to 2 p.m. on all of our campuses. Drive up to our North Campus, our South Campus, or the Petersburg Dream Center to pick up an Easter bag for your child or children. Be sure that they log into Kids Worship on Easter Sunday, April 4th at 2 p.m. with their Easter bag for our virtual Easter extravaganza. No registration is required and this event is free, but we encourage you to help in our outreach efforts to support Caritas by bringing a donated item in the form of peanut butter, cereal, hot or cold, pasta, spaghetti or elbow, spaghetti sauce, brown rice, fruit cups, and dry beans. Family Paint Night will take place Saturday, April 3rd from 4 to 5 p.m. on Microsoft Teams. David Marion of Liberated Flow will lead children, students, and their families in an Easter-themed paint-by-number exercise on pre-sketched canvases. See our website for registration details. Ready to celebrate Easter 2021? Join us live online at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. at myspbc.tv, our mobile app, Facebook, and YouTube Live at MySPBC to celebrate Easter this year. Share in this time of engaging worship with our special guest, Kurt Carr. Experience the Easter story and celebrate the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Use the Easter Facebook event to invite your friends and family. Students, don't miss our SMB Student Worship at 12 p.m., followed by our Imagination Kids Worship Easter Extravaganza Celebration at 2 p.m. Then attend our Front Row Concert Series at 7 p.m. at myspbc.tv, our mobile app, Facebook, and YouTube Live at myspbc, featuring Jonathan McReynolds. Use the Front Row Concert Facebook event to invite your friends and family. Join us for the Bridge Bible Study every Thursday at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. It's streamed across all of our platforms. Starting April 8th, we're beginning a new teaching series entitled Hurt But Not Hindered, How to Move Forward. You don't want to miss it. Invite your friends and family. Download the student outline from our website at myspbc.org or text the word INSIDER to 804-643-4769 to receive it automatically each week. Invite someone to watch with you. You may not realize it, but the health of your soul is affected by what you experience in life, the ups and downs, challenges, and stress. Caring for your soul goes a long way in keeping you steady, filled with peace, and growing in wisdom. After a year in pandemic, we are all in need of repair. Join our senior pastor, Dr. Lance Watson, beginning April 11th for this insightful new series as he leads us on a journey of soul repair. Invite somebody to share it with you. We're continuing our efforts to tell the church's history through stained glass panels for the chapel at St. Paul's North. 
we are looking specifically for photos of the following persons. Reverend Timothy Pickney, Margie Bowling, Massey Crawford, John Crawley, Josie Crawley, Daisy Graham, Francis Harris, Hattie Moore, William Moore, Mary Neal, Reverend Isaac Purley, Martha Purley, Evelyn Scott, and Reverend John Scott. If you have any, please call Mrs. Frances Buster at 804-463-2421. We'll be accepting pictures until April 9th. Reboot your finances this post-pandemic season with our virtual Basic Money. This workshop features four one-hour sessions that begin Saturday, April 10th from 10 to 11 a.m. The sessions are designed to help you make smart money choices, gain insight about wise investments, and make the best plan for your stimulus check. Space is limited, so register now at www.myspbc.info slash basicmoney2021. Registration is required and closes on April 8th. For questions or additional information, please call the CARE team at 804-463-2401. We are St. Paul's everywhere. Every week, we quadruple stream our worship celebrations and the Bible studies on our mobile app at myspbc.tv, Facebook, and YouTube at myspbc. If you have trouble with one stream, just stream hop over to another platform. You're never disconnected. Together, we are communicating the positive power of Jesus Christ to our generation. Spread the word. Take St. Paul's everywhere by downloading our free app from your app store or just text my SPBC app to 77977 and follow the prompts to gain access to information and resources that will help you to cultivate your faith and deepen your connection with our church family. Take St. Paul's everywhere. Everybody is in a stage of life. We'd like you to use your life stage color when you comment and post online. The circles are in your emojis. Here are the colors. Imagination, yellow. SMB, purple. Dream Chasers, orange. Aspire, red. Fusion, blue. Encore, green. Primetime, gold. And Refiners, white. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.